Sarah, have you seen the new collection from our sponsor, Vionic? It's called Vionic Vitals, and it offers some of Vionic's best essential styles for everyday wear to help you get ready for the spring, which is not that far off, by the way. The Willa Slip-On Flat is in the Vitals collection, and I have to say, I have a pair of Willas, and they are one of my favorites. This shoe has classic and classy loafer styling with a seriously supportive footbed, and they come in over 12 colors to complement any outfit. I've also got a pair of Vionic's Uptown Loafers on the way, which I'm really excited about because they collapse flat for packing. I'll definitely get a ton of use out of those when I'm traveling this spring. I know, and that feature is so smart. Well, Megan, I am also very excited about the Vionic Vitals collection. These are versatile daily wear styles that feel as good as they look. Yeah, and let's talk about that comfort, Sarah. Vionic actually got started by revolutionizing medical orthotics. Today, they continue to use that science to engineer shoes that are super cute and also feel great on your feet. Vionic even offers a 30-day guarantee. Wear your shoes, love them, or return for a full refund within 30 days. Use code THEMOMHOUR15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's one-time use only. Vionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Sarah. We're two moms with eight kids between us, and we're the hosts of The Mom Hour. On this show, we're joined by a team of unique mom voices from across the country and in different stages of motherhood to bring you tips, ideas, and encouragement, and to help you feel a little less alone. We all know that motherhood is a lot easier when real moms share honest truths and remind each other that it's all going to be okay. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to The Mom Hour. Hey, everyone, and welcome to episode 411 of The Mom Hour. I am Sarah Powers here with Megan Francis. Hey, Megan. Hi, Sarah. Well, we missed you last week, but you're back and it's April. It's very much spring right now, which is funny because we're actually going to be talking about summer because as moms, we have to be looking a season ahead, right? Well, I want to tell you that I'm recording this um, in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, where there is still a significant amount of snow on the ground. So I don't even know what season it is, Sarah. But it, as we know, when we live in these Midwestern climates, it can things can escalate quickly. It can go from looking essentially like winter one day to suddenly it's like really hot, and you're wondering what happened. You're wondering what happened, and then we also know what's coming in the late spring if you have school aged children, you know that there is like the craziness of end of school, late spring, May in in particular can be so crazy. And then so not just seasonally and meteorologically, all of a sudden it's summer, but also in terms of life management and like calendar planning, it can be all of a sudden it's summer. And so we thought this year it would be fun to think about what little things can we do in our lives, in our homes, in our backyard gardens with our kids now and now being roughly springish doesn't have to be today everyone april 4th that you're listening to this but now ish what are some things we can do that will take a little pressure off when summer does arrive and maybe allow us to enjoy the season even more and we have uh this is a two part a part one part two so both this week and next week we're going to be sharing tips for little things to do now so that you can enjoy summer later We also have some great ideas from our communities on Instagram and Facebook. And then the rest of the tips, Megan, I would say are our hard won, hard earned wisdom from being summer moms many, many times over you and I. Well, I want to, I think that this is a topic that definitely warrants two episodes, because if you think about it, your summer break or however you look at summer, if your kids are really little to you, summer might truly just be a season, you know, like have nothing to do with the school year. If you have school-aged kids, of course, it revolves around their school calendar, which may or may not actually line up with the summer season on the calendar. Um, But it is a lot of your life. It's a quarter of your year. And it's the time when, if your kids are a little older, you have the most like unfettered access to them. It's kind of like there's a lot of expectations we pour into summer. And then yet there's also this idea that it just happens naturally. Like, that because it's summer break, the fun will just, I don't know, naturally flow. And we know that that isn't always the case. Yeah, you're so right. And I think one thing we return to again and again on this show is that anytime we can do our future selves a favor, 
by taking something we learned last year or the year before and making this year just a little bit easier on ourselves, removing some of the pressure or taking something off the to-do list. Um, and we just thought spring would be a nice time to think about that because once summer hits, it's, it's summer, it's go time. Yeah. So. Well, before we dive into all of that, um, I have a little announcement and that is we are doing our uh, biannual, no, every other year, whatever the word for that is, semi-annual. Um, no, uh, no well, it is biannual. I, I, think I think it's biannual. <laughs> Didn't we do some research on this? Not to like segue here yeah, or okay. take us into a tangent, but um, that this blew my mind when I figured this out because we both were like, what is biweekly? Is it like twice a week or every other week? And I actually looked it up because it drove me crazy and it's either. Well, I, so think, I think it the used same to be as with one. biannual. It's like how literally can also mean figuratively now. <laughs> right. I think it's like the, yes. the hardcore semantics people gave up and people were using uh. it wrongly for so long that now <laughs> it can mean either. Whew. Anyway, every other year, approximately, we do a audience or listener survey. Um, and the survey answers and results and the questions actually change each time, but it allows us to hear from all of you as a whole. We use it to plan content. We use it to reflect on our business and how we can grow and improve and serve you better. We also use it um, in looking at what advertisers are relevant to you and what you're what you're thinking about in your life. What what life changes are coming up for you. The surveys are quick and they're anonymous. Um, so it's a little different than like leaving us a review or sending us an email. This truly is like we aim to get a couple thousand responses and it's really, really helpful. So um, I know if you've been around a long time, I'm always the one being like, please, please, please do the survey. So it's that time again. Um, it's available. The link is right where you're listening or you can go to the momhour.com slash survey. And you will hear you will hear us remind you to do it for the next month or so. We leave it open for a couple months, um, and then usually when we have reached a a number that I feel like is a good sample size for our audience, we we shut her down and we dig into the results, and it's kind of fun. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, it really is helpful. So go check that out. Sarah, you know when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies. But having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product the algorithm sends my way. You know what's not too good to be true, though? Our sponsor, Ritual, and their clinically backed Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean, bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients, and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start ritual or add essential for women 18 plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. Megan, it's hard to believe it, but for plan ahead types like me, spring is right around the corner. And that means warmer weather and more time on the go. Today, we're talking about the Vionic Vitals collection from our longtime sponsor, Vionic Shoes. These are the best essential styles for everyday wear to get you ready for the season. There's the Uptown Loafer, a super cute, chunky loafer that comes in 10 different colors and collapses flat for easy packing. And there's also the Chardonnay Heeled Sandal, which I just ordered a pair of in a bright cherry red. I don't wear heels a ton anymore, but when I do, they are always Vionic because they're just so comfortable. Yeah, and I was excited to see that the Willa Slip-On Flat is part of the Vitals collection because I have those in a bright blue and they're so much fun. Elevate your wardrobe with Vionic Vitals, a meticulously crafted collection with daily wear styles designed for comfort and versatility. And of course, the entire collection features Vionic's exclusive Viomotion technology, which is what makes their shoes so comfortable and supportive. The company actually got their start by revolutionizing medical orthotics. And then, lucky us, they just continued that right into fashion footwear. They even offer a 30-day guarantee so you can wear them, love them, or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code THEMOMHOUR15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's a one-time use only. Bionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. 
All right, Megan. So what is your first do this now, enjoy summer later tip for our listeners? Well, a lot of the tips we're going to share in the next couple of episodes are very tactical. This one is a little more big picture. And I would even argue that it's something you can start thinking about doing now, but like there's no deadline. It's just something that you can continue to do and can continue to evolve. And that is to create your own summer philosophy, your own family's summer philosophy, your idea of as a mom, how you enjoy spending the summer and what values or preferences go around that. And I say this because, again, summer can be very heavy. Like parents are doing it. Families are doing it in all kinds of different ways. Um, It's almost like the how fraught the um, choosing like a school for your kids can feel yeah, whether the it's going to be public or private. Uh, it always yeah, reminds me like, of like the holidays too. Yeah. It's, it's like you come into it and it's a fresh new chance to feel less than and to feel <laughs> overwhelmed. It's like you get another opportunity to feel pressure and like comparison and all that. Lucky you. And I just think there's so many ways to do summer that can be wonderful for you and your kids and you get to decide like you're the decider. So if you're the family, if you're the mom who thinks I would really like my kids to be in a lot of camps, wonderful. But if you're the mom who thinks that's really not my, um, my jam and for whatever reason, that's not the way I want to do summer, then that's totally fine too. And You may only notice the people around you who are doing things differently from you, but there are people who are doing things just like you. It's like they might just be at home or whatever, or maybe their kids are in camp and you're not seeing them because you're, you're the one hanging out in the backyard and seeing only the kids who are home in your neighborhood. So I just, I don't think this is something where it's like, there's a deadline around it. It's more like open yourself now to the idea that you will have your own very unique way of doing summer and then lean into that and make it feel like you chose it intentionally because you did and like give yourself a little, I don't know, a little pride around that or a little bit like make that your story, your narrative. Yes, Um, It will help shape the other decisions that we'll be talking about today. I could not love this more. And I really think that this spring is a great time to do that because just like you said at the end there, the flyers and the decisions and the, Hey, does your kid want to get in with my kid on this thing? All these, it's going to start coming pretty soon and having those kind of bedrock foundational value statements or mission statements or philosophies. Um, I'm almost picturing you could free write or journal about this. You could have a quick meeting with your co-parent about this. I, I really, I did not do this, but I feel like I wish I had when my kids were smaller. So I really love that. That's the one we're kicking off with. Um, Okay, here's a fun one. You can do this anytime today, this week. I would recommend doing it again soon. And that is to take an hour for yourself, get a beverage and spend some time going back and looking at photos on your photo on your, you know, your phone. What do you call that? Your photo reel? No, there's a name for it Um, in your phone album. Yeah. (laughs) Why is this so hard for me to say? There's a, there's a name for just like the photos in your phone, like not any, okay. not anything special or organized, but just like the, the photos from last summer, the, maybe your planner or your journal from last summer, even your digital, your Google calendar from last summer. If you are someone who posts regularly on social media, scroll back through your social feeds, basically like take yourself in spring 2023 on a little reminder tour, a little flashback of summer 2022. And if you wanted to do this, if you wanted to go back a few years or a couple years, go for it. You're going to run into some COVID summers. I'll warn you there. But why that I think this is so instructive is when we look at, if you just did your camera roll, thank you. It's your camera roll. That's the oh, yes, name I was. Roll. Yes. 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 If all you did was look at, and you can just type in June, 2022, and it should come up on your camera roll. If all you did was look at the photos, I guarantee you're going to have a few gut emotional reactions to things. It's going to be a <laughs> screenshot of something. It's, it might not even be. I Actually, it won't be the same really pretty photos that you maybe posted on public social media. No, it'll be I'm like a lot of the ones like, that are yeah. show the raw reality. Yes, that's right. When you took yeah. a picture of like the 
dog poop in the kitchen that you texted to your husband on a really overwhelmed day, you are going to have, it's like a, this is your life of last summer. And I'm not even suggesting you really do anything with this information, except to take a good hour and, and take that, this is your life flashback tour and just see what comes up for you. You might find that you remember little tiny sweet moments that weren't planned. Like if I asked you, oh, Megan, what did you do that last summer that was so fun? And you'd say, well, we went camping. We did our big trip here. But you might forget about like the walk you took on the beach or yeah. like this season of life you were in with your kids. So um, I don't even have a next step, except that if you really take some time with it, I mean, if you are a journaler or have a paper planner, maybe the maybe the clues are in there. Maybe it's in your meal plan that you write in your planner and you're like, oh, right. Like we ate outside every day. So just give yourself those sense memories and both for the good and the not so good. And then use that to inform these next decisions that are going to come up. What do you want more of? What do you for sure not want to not repeat this year and all of that? I love this um, because I think for myself, I tend to forget. Uh, I, yeah. I I forget a lot of what happened. I forget how much we did often. And I'll go back and look at photos and be like, wow. You know, we really, we really went and looked at a lot of sunsets or we really, whatever the thing is, right? It's easy to just always be, okay, what's the next thing mode? And to not only lose sight of, like you said, the emotional reality of the place where you were and how one trip might've worked out and another one didn't or whatever, but also it's nice to give yourself a little credit um, yeah. and to kind of acknowledge all the things that you did. So I, I love that one. Well, my next tip is a little more tactical. Um, and that is to figure out a budget for camps and activities. And I'm, I'm talking everything from like sleepaway camp to like the two hour program at the YMCA. Come up with a budget and it can be any sized budget. I don't care what your budget is. This isn't really, in my opinion, about budgeting. Like this isn't really a personal finance right. um, decision, although it can be part of that, right? We don't have unlimited amounts of money to spend on this stuff, but it's more like a allocation question because the flyers start to come in and you can so quickly lose track of how much it all adds up to a and then also your kids can start if if you have kids who want to do that sort of thing and you may also have kids who don't want to do any of it yeah. and you want them to do both. some of it and yeah. then it's like I have, I have some of each <laughs> yeah exactly um it's helpful to kind of have a dollar amount because yes. then you sort of know not only what's possible, but like if your kids are wanting to do this and that it's, it's kind of getting them to have a little skin in the game or involving them in some of the decision-making. Um, I think it'd be a really, a really useful tool at that age to say, okay, well, what we have to spend on camps this summer is X. And I see that you want to do you know, X, Y, Z, P, D, Q, A, B, and C. Um, what can you choose that will fit within that budget? I just think it's a really, it's a great way to keep your budget in line. It's also a great way to teach your kids about the yeah. fact that like extras don't just, the money for extras doesn't just magically appear. And then it also kind of naturally puts some limitations on something that can get a little out of hand. Yes, I love all of that. Great one. Okay, well, here's one that came up for me just yesterday because I went to make a skin check dermatology appointment for what I thought would be sometime in May because um, that's when I had it last year. And they told me that the doctor's availability was running out to late December. And I was like, okay, Whoa. this is, uh, I know this is a problem in my town um, and I don't know what everybody's individual like healthcare situations where they are, but it does seem that booking medical appointments and procedures and personal care appointments, this could also be your getting your hair highlighted, um, Great. all kinds of, uh, personal care and healthcare appointments. I'm going to suggest that you look now in the spring at scheduling some of the ones, you know, are going to be coming up, schedule them now. And I don't mean that they need to be scheduled for spring or summer or fall necessarily because you know best what works best for you. Sometimes I like the idea of like getting my kids into the dentist in like the first week of summer when I know we're off school, but we're not going to be traveling. And I might, I might decide that's a great week to just load up on orthodontist, dentist, like all the things. Or I might decide, you know what, summer is not for 
uh, healthcare appointments at all. I don't want to deal with it. That's fine. So you kind of know your own personal philosophy, but I'm going to recommend that you spend a little time this spring, at least looking at what's coming up, because if summer hits and you're now fighting with different uh, travel schedules, camp schedules, and some of these places are booking out one, two, three, six months, you're going to find yourself like, you know, like me and having making uh, appointments that are not happening until late December. So it's probably a good thing to do quarterly anyway, is to look ahead at personal and healthcare appointments. But I would say that summer throws an extra wrench uh, into these, and it's just a nice thing to do this spring. Well, I will add two personal uh, from experience, <laughs> and you will see in my next tip that running around trying to find a medical office open that will do shots um, before a date, a specific date, can be a real summer ruiner. So my my sort of way of being in summer is often to just forget that not summer exists. Yes, I, it's easy. And that there is a life outside of summer. It's like I just go into it and I'm like, wee, I'm just free flowing through summer. And then suddenly I realized that one of my kids needs, you know, some mandatory vaccination to go back to school. And that happens later than you would think. Like that's still happening for teenagers. And it's so off your radar that you weren't thinking about it. And I've had now a couple of different times, kind of like a nice summer afternoon or some plans wrecked (laughs) because now I've got to go track down a place where I can get my kids the shots that they need. It's not as easy if, as if they right. had just gone into their doctor's office and gotten it. Now that's definitely not happening because yeah. they're booked way out. So now I have to go like get in, go to the health department or find a, a clinic that will do it. So um, all of those things are great to think about now because that will sneak up on you. And I will also um, point out that if your kids are going to do any school related uh, sports camps that have to do with the sport, like, yeah. okay, say there's a fall sport they're going to do, but like yes. the season kind of technically begins in July. They may need a physical yep. on file before they can start camp. Yep. I was Often, just going to say camp physicals yeah. and back to school yeah. well checks. Um, yep. Get those on the calendar now. Even if the yep. appointment is like August 31st, it's just now it's done and you're not doing that done. scramble. Yeah. I didn't mean to yeah. cut you off. There. And well, it's okay. I was just going to say at least in our public schools the um, those physicals are often done really cheap by the, like at the school. Oh, cool. You just have to make sure you get on the calendar. And it's often like toward the end of the summer, or sometimes I'll have two different dates. And if you get there early, you get in quickly and it's cheap and it's easy. Um, so just don't let, don't lose sight of that just because you did a Megan and fell into the summer abyss. Yes. And I, I have, feel like I just hijacked your tip. No, and I have, I have so much experience. With I this. have two more quick things to say about okay. this. I'm so glad you brought up camp and school physicals because I was even thinking like a lot of mom appointments, but you're so right. Um, so my two quick things on this are if you are working ahead, if you are making these appointments now, you just have the benefit of being so much more in control of your schedule come summer. I use yes. the example of like, dedicating a whole week to these types of appointments, or it could be a day where your kids go to the dentist in the morning and then you take them for a treat. And then they've got haircuts in the afternoon. Well, it might not be the kid's favorite day, but you've now batched a lot of like tasks and you have a whole bunch of other days that don't have those appointments on them. What can sometimes happen in my family is I think, oh, we've got this easy breezy couple weeks of nothing planned in the summer. And then it's like one kid has one orthodontist appointment one day Someone has a haircut the next day. And it's like those one-offs can kind of, um, they end up having more control over your schedule than you would think, because you're not going to spend the whole day at the beach if someone has a 1030 um, doctor's appointment. So yeah. Right. Um, And then my final, final thing on this is we've been talking a lot about medical and healthcare, but you can use this for yourself and your own feeling good in your body. You could pre-book yourself a massage for the week after you come back from a stressful family vacation. If you like to get your nails and your toes done, you can schedule a mani-pedi for, you know, the day of a wedding that you're going to. So don't forget the fluffy and the frivolous in here too. Um, There's nothing worse than, I always say that nothing worse. Of course, there's lots of things worse, but it's annoying to try to get into a hair salon for a quick trim when you're also packing for a trip and doing all these other things. So use it for yourself too, I guess. Love that. 
We are welcoming back Dr. Mom Butt Balm as a sponsor today. And Megan, I guess you must be back to changing diapers again, right? Now that you have a step grandbaby in the mix. I have changed a few lately, Sarah. And yeah, it really takes me back to that memory from early motherhood. I actually always enjoyed diaper changes unless they were the really gross toddler ones or if there was diaper rash involved. Oh my gosh, yes. I remember being so stressed out, like gearing up for the saddest diaper change ever. Your baby knows it's going to hurt. You know they're going to cry. It is just the worst. And having to use goopy, gross diaper rash cream definitely didn't help. Dr. Mom Butt Balm was developed by a mom who's also a doctor when she couldn't find any traditional products that worked for her baby's persistent diaper rash. This pediatrician-approved formula is made with all quality ingredients and no artificial dyes or preservatives. And since it's easy to remove, you won't have to wipe and wipe to get it off of your baby's skin. That is so important, especially if they're already a little chafed. And I love the way this formula feels. A little goes a long way. Don't let diaper rash come between you and your baby. Shop for Dr. Mom Butt Balm online at Amazon or Walmart today. Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids' diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with sugar, they have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them, and I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution, Haya, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash MomHour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Okay, Megan, my next do this now, enjoy summer later is a little bit of a cheat because it's actually do this now and And forget about it later. (laughs) Yes. Well, do this now and you will be happier on the last week of school. So this is Ah, actually a end of school transition to summer, which we know is it's not quite school and it's not quite summer. And it's its own special time of year, which is like the last two weeks of May or maybe early June, depending on when your school is let out. So my tip is to, borrowing from Kendra, the lazy genius, decide once what your personal philosophy is about end of year teacher gifts and decide once and now, and if you want to be extra, do it now. Like write a couple of thank you cards or or get the Starbucks gift card. Um, It it depends on if you want to do all that now, but just decide now what you're going to do for end of year teacher gifts. And I'll just share that in the communities I've lived in, There's the National Teacher Appreciation Week, which happens everywhere the first week of May. So that's coming up even sooner. And some places I've lived, the school really leads into Teacher Appreciation Week, and there's opportunities to contribute to a gift basket or a potluck. Um, And that happens the first week of May, I think, like in a lot of places, because I think it's like a national thing. Um, And if your school does a lot there, you may decide that that is your end of year, like teacher appreciation or not, because then there's also the last day in the last week of school, which commonly people might send in a card. You might have your kid write a little something. Some people do end of year gifts. There's there's many, many ways to appreciate teachers. I like all of them, but I do think as moms, it can you can feel pressure to do all of it and like look around and like, am I doing am I doing this at the right time? What's everybody else doing? So I will just tell you you can decide once how you appreciate your teachers. I tend to do a handwritten note from me and a handwritten note from my kid and not usually a gift at the end of the year, just a letter or, or a note, but everybody's different. And then if there were um, something to contribute to, I I would probably kick in for that too. So anyway, there's no right answer, but I can tell you it's coming. And whether you have daycare through 
middle school, probably your school is going to do something and the pressure will start to mount. So think about it now. Yeah. Get in front of it. And I agree that last week of school or so is a weird, like no man's land. It's not quite (laughs) summer. It's not quite school year. It's, it's its own beast, but, um, I do love that one. Well, Sarah, I stole this one from you. I am sorry, but Sarah had this written on her outline and I had so much to say. I stole it because I know we both have a lot to say. And I will actually also expand on what you had (laughs) noted. Um, So the the tip is to make sure that you arrange a sitter for your pet for any vacations that you're going on. And I know Sarah and I both have some really painful examples of times that we kind of forgot. This is the tip we need for ourselves. This is the tip we need for, well, I don't need it anymore because I don't have it. My dog is dead. You I do have chickens cats. and cats yeah. now. I know, but that's a very, that's so different than having dogs that have yeah. to be taken care of. But, like You cannot go on a vacation without a dog sitter. You can usually find someone to come by and feed your cats. But regardless, I would, I would expand this to say, just in general, don't forget you have pets. It's so true. Because it's not like, I mean, I love my animals. Um, I really love my cats. I loved my dog enough, yep. but I would be making plans as though the animals were going to enter a vault during that time Me too. and like would just cease to exist or like go on pause or something. Like they would just be frozen in time and then I'd come back and snap my fingers and they would become pets again. And that's not how they work. And so there's a lot of things like even a long afternoon outing, yes. you might not actually be able to go on if if you're going to come home to a bunch of dog poop on the floor. And especially if you have a younger animal, um, it's just something you have to think about. You, you need to be thinking about their shots. If you're going to board them, uh, make sure their shots are up to date. There might be those shot appointments sometimes come up faster than you would think. And there's things like um, kennel cough is Bordetella or something like that. Mm -hmm. Bordetella. Um, I think they need that like every year now, or it's pretty often. Sometimes they you'll need to not actually let you, they, they no. will not let you board without that right. piece of paper, rabies, Bordetella. Yeah. Yep. And, um, some of them you can actually buy and administer yourself, which I didn't realize. Oh. So, so there's, you have options, but just don't lose sight of the fact that they, that these, that this exists and that this is a thing. And, um, there's lots of ways to skin that cat to use a terrible <laughs> terrible. <laughs> um, there's to use a terrible, you know, analogy or metaphor, I guess, for this particular thing. It's just, if you don't think about it ahead of time, you're going to be really stressed. Even if it's just an overnighter, you want to go visit your sister in the next town over and play in her pool with the kids. And then you're like, Oh, right. but my animals don't cease to exist during that time. I actually think that those smaller excursions, the one day or the one night or two nights, um, can for me, they come up to surprise me even more than the big trips. I, in the yeah. past, have been like, okay, big trip, dog boarding, like check. But I have done also done the thing where I'm going to get out of town for a few days and I think, well, the, I don't need pet care because somebody is back at home. Brian's working or, you know, whatever. The kids are with my parents, so not everyone is leaving town. And then I think, oh, but nobody's going to be in the house all day because Brian works right. outside the house and maybe I've got, like, my parents are watching the kids. So it's almost those in-between Things that e- that is yeah. even easier to forget, and um, you you made a joke about cats being easier to leave and dogs being harder, but I I almost think there's there's the flip side of that, which is because it's easier to leave. We have right now we have a guinea pig and two cats, but we also last summer had rats who have since passed on. You have chickens, those those uh, non dog friends of ours that are maybe can go a day, day and a half, two days, and just need a quick check in by somebody. That's also easy to write off in your head as it's not that big a deal. So I'll deal with it later. And you still have to deal with it. Someone's still for my cats. We have a neighbor friend who comes by like once a day or my parents might stop by. It's still something that's going to get added to your task list as uh, impending travel comes closer. So why not? If you know the travel for the ones you know now, do it now or set yourself a reminder that pops up as it gets closer. If, if we're really too far out on April 4th, then that's fair, but then do something so that it won't come to surprise you. And you really can't drop chickens off at someone else's house. <laughs> Do- many people will take your dog for the afternoon or for a weekend 
in their home, but I don't know a single person who would let me drop my chickens off at their house. That would be really yes. funny, though. I'm picturing Maybe you like, in a car yet. with full of chickens, <laughs> like, yes. like driving down the road. In little chicken carriers. Oh, no, I was picturing them free range in your car. Like oh, some well, of them in the yeah. trunk, some of them in the way back and then kind of <laughs> spilling over into the back seat. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Yes. I think if you do nothing else that we've talked about today, think do about arranging your, your pet sitting. That's the, that's the key one. Just um, don't forget that they're there. Just don't, don't forget, forget you have animals. I also love that you said, I love my cats and I loved my dog well enough because yes. same that my dog's still here, but we're the same that way. Okay. Let's dive into some of the suggestions that came from our social media, our communities online. So I looked through, we posted this query on both Instagram and in our Facebook group and got some great comments. And we'll we'll link up the whole thread so you can read through everybody's comments. But I thought we would just shout out a few each. And I'm going to start with, um, on Instagram, Lisa Payne, who's a contributor on our team, This one is highly relevant because as you listen to this, friends, Easter is this coming Sunday. So this is a really do this one right now if you still have time. Lisa said, when my kids were younger, I'd fill their Easter baskets with gardening tools, gloves, seeds, sidewalk chalk, bubbles, water balloons, and flip-flops. So I had them on hand when it was time or if we had a really nice Midwest spring day that called for those items. So love the idea of um, using Easter as a little launch pad to your summer season um, things that you know your kids will need. Goggles work well for that. Um, you know, summer art supplies, all kinds of things. So there's still time this week to do that one right now. Yeah, we had a couple of comments in the Facebook group that were very similar, things like bathing suits and goggles and just basically summer items you know you're going to need anyway. I will say for myself, um, because there's such a long time yeah. in Michigan between Easter and when it begins to feel like summer, I usually went with more transition. It would have felt kind of mean to give my right. kids swim goggles. <laughs> <So> true. <laughs> on April 1st or on April 12th or whatever. Like, here, kids, now wait no, yeah. three more months. And then you take you it away. Mom's going to yeah. take your Easter basket away now and store it in the closet. No, I, exactly, I think, yeah, exactly. season dependent. I see what you're right. saying there. <laughs> but often I would do um, even a little bit of something a little bit bigger, like a skateboard or a mm-hmm. scooter. Um there's not, those are not terribly expensive and it, you know, that not like you have to give your kids gifts on Easter, but if they're going to get a basket full of stuff anyway, you may as well make it something that, um, can kind of get you a little mileage into the summer. Um, and yes, in, in the Midwest, I would say sidewalk chalk and, uh, kites Mm -hmm. are always winners, bubbles, anything that just gets them in the outdoor frame of mind for sure. Okay, so also on Instagram, our friend Emma Smith, who is also a wonderful children's book author that we love. Emma said getting seeds and seedlings into the ground now so we can enjoy them in summer. Emma, I happen to know, lives in the San Francisco area. She said last summer, we particularly enjoyed watching our pumpkin plants grow throughout the entire summer and into fall. It was thrilling to see the flowers turn into pumpkins and to track their growth. Some didn't survive, making the excitement about the ones that did even bigger. We watered them faithfully, protected them from kids and dogs, took lots of pictures, and picked them before Halloween. So I love that, thinking about spring as the launch pad for your growing season, and not just your summer growing season, but actually into fall. So I love that one. Okay, and then this one from Sarah on Instagram. Megan, this reminds me of what you said as well. She said, I think about a summertime budget so that we aren't overspending in the beginning. And then at the end, when it's the hottest, we don't have as much money to spend on indoor activities. So you talked about it more from a camps and activities perspective for kids. But I also really like the idea of thinking about your budget and making sure that you're not both out of energy and mojo and right. money at the end and because money all yeah, at the same time because like yes. those august indoor activities like going to the roller rink or the bounce house place or you know some place to escape it all um you will want resources left over at the end of the summer so i loved that one and then carol said buy the sunscreen that you like and that the kids tolerate now before it's all on back order later So again, you probably know this when you looked at your phone's camera roll and you saw pictures of last summer, maybe a few things popped into your mind, sunscreen, 
Um, other other consumables that you go through really fast in the summer. I love the idea to just put those add to cart right now. Why not? Why not? And it's always better to have, you know, them stashed about in different places. Yeah. And you, you might be needed. You yeah. might get coupons and deals now or be able to cash in on some points or some system. Now I feel like the retailers get smart and it's harder to do that when it's prime time. Especially if you're like already on vacation and you're in, you know, a vacation town's very expensive gift shop downtown and you're paying twice the price. Definitely think ahead. Think ahead. Um, Okay. So I have a few from our Facebook group. Um, Angela, who was one of the ones who also gave the great tip about putting summer stuff in the Easter basket, also says if you want to book a place that fills fast but allows reservations one year from the date, set up a calendar reminder. So I think she's actually thinking like you're thinking not this coming summer, yeah, but like a whole summer, a, a whole year in advance. And sometimes you really do need to be thinking that far out. Um, yep. at, the, at the very least, I would say if you are hoping to book anything for this coming summer, um, right now is probably your last chance. Yeah. So uh, don't let that slip. And just from experience, if you are trying to put anything together with extended family mm-hmm. and it's like an extended family group, thing and someone hasn't been appointed as like the person who's going to book it. Um, what should I say here? Just, just clarify that someone's actually booking. Oh, sounds like you maybe have some experience in this area. Well, historically it's been me, but there have been a few times when it's like the conversation takes on a life of its own. You know how those planning yeah. conversations can become so detailed and big and long. And then everyone ends the conversation and you think a decision was made. So then it seems like also the thing happened. Like what's the actual action item? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so anyway, just if you have any big family vacations coming up, I would recommend that you be very clear (laughs) that everything's actually booked. Look look through your email and see if you have a reservation in your email. If not, don't trust it. Um, Another one we had from Lydia, I thought this was pretty genius. She says, brainstorm half day activities, not full day activities, and get on track with whatever memberships, reservations, et cetera, are needed to make them happen. So I love the the focus on half day activities. That feels so much less overwhelming and you can, it still leaves part of your day Mm -hmm. um, to do other stuff. So I just really like that. Yeah, I like it. And then... And then Becky has this um, product recommendation, and I personally use this a lot, especially when my older kids were little. She says, buy a good set of walkie-talkies, not the kitty versions. They're about $25 on Amazon. They will reach up to two miles. Uh, wow. She said her they live on in a rural area on a large piece of land, and her bigger kids, 9 and 11, can explore and adventure through the property um, with walkie-talkies. I used to give these to the kids to just be able to play in the neighborhood without, you know, losing complete, you know, they're not going to, it's not a phone. (laughs) So it's not like you can't call them necessarily quite the same way you could, but it is a really good way of them staying in touch with you or with with each other. It's kind of like a buddy system. So we lean on walkie talkies a lot when my kids were that age. I really love that. And I, we only had some kitty toy ones that, you know, they played with in the house when they were really little. So I've actually never, I've never thought of that. I really like that. They've gotten really good. Okay. Well, we can't give away all of the really good tips today, Megan, because this is a part one, part two. We both have more tips from our own lives to share next Tuesday, and we have more from the community. So we'll stop here for today. um, And next Tuesday, we'll be back and we'll just keep going with this topic. I would love to hear if anybody takes action. If anybody does any of these, shoot us an email or find us on social media. I would love to hear Um, what you actually did to set yourself up for a fun summer. And then as a reminder, I would really appreciate it if you would take our listener survey. There's a link right where you're listening now, or you can go to themomhour.com slash survey, and it'll be open for a few weeks at least there. And then, yeah, we'll talk to everybody next week. Happy Easter this weekend to those who celebrate. And Megan, I will talk to you soon. Happy Easter. Talk to you all soon. Thanks for listening to The Mom Hour. Everything we talked about in today's episode is available at themomhour.com. And hey, while you're there, you can find more than 500 podcast episodes, plus articles, playlists, and resources about motherhood and parenting at every stage. 
And if you like today's episode, we'd love it if you would take a minute to share the show with another mom in your life. You can also find us on Instagram at The Mom Hour, chatting and interacting with listeners between episodes. Thanks for being here, friends. We'll talk to you soon. Sarah, I have been having just the best time making my new podcast, The Teas Made. I launched back in November, and so far I've covered topics like staying warm on cold winter walks, nurturing creativity, how to be a great host, and even Nordic secrets to loving winter. Well, you know I am fan number one of The Teas Made. It's got such a cozy vibe, and it seems like you've really hit your stride in covering topics like wellness, self-care, comforting rituals and routines, and home and family life. Just look for The Teas Made with Megan Francis wherever you get your podcasts or head to theteasmade.com to find all the episodes. Hey, everyone, we have a favor to ask. If you are an Apple Podcasts user, can you check really quickly to make sure you're still following the mom hour? Apple did one of their big software updates recently, and it changed a bunch of things about how you get the podcasts you're subscribed to. If Apple Podcasts is your podcast app of choice, all you have to do is find your way to our show page and then click the little plus sign or follow in the top right corner. Thanks so much.